About a year ago, I released a video about the IEMA T9. That it could possibly be the product of the year all the way in April. Well now, I've got the T9 Pro. Is it better? Sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the IEMA T9 Pro. The T9 Pro is a lot different from the T9. I mean, from a distance, you could say, yes, they are related, but they're not twins. Maybe not even first cousins, maybe stepbrothers. I am actually comparing it to the Duke Audio ST01 Pro instead of the T9, the first edition. There's actually been two T9 first edition. One was the original, and then there was some shut down issues where if it didn't sense a signal for a while, the T9 would just shut down. That has since been upgraded. The ST01 Pro is kind of the same thing, but Duke puts it out. And the Duke version has a slightly different chipset. So they're all a little bit similar, but they're all also different. So let's talk about some of those differences. This is the T9 Pro. As you can see, it still has its VU meter over here, but over here is a digital display. Not only is it a digital display, but it also has blinking lights, 80s style. So not only do they cover the VU meter right here, analog style, but then we move into the 80s where you have dancing LED lights. And I thought it was kind of cheesy when I first saw it. Now I don't. Who doesn't like dancing lights? I don't know. Then in the middle, you have a knurled volume knob. Right above that, right in the middle of its forehead. Boop, boop. This is a little bit weird when you look at it. Like if this is, it's like you have a black eye here and then you have the VU and then there's just something in the middle of the forehead that controls the input selection. Inputs? What kind of inputs? Well, I'm glad you asked. On the back, you have Bluetooth antenna don't really need to use. Over on this side, you have full-size USB, full-size optical, full-sized coaxial, and then you have a, an, an analog, an analog input, and then analog output right here. So think subwoofers, or powered speakers, if you want to use this as a standalone DAC slash preamp, and then you have the tubey tubes on top. These are marked as GE tubes. Are they GE tubes? I don't know. They say GE tubes, so I would be inclined to trust them. And also, this did not come directly from IEMA. Not that that would be a problem. This actually came from Ada Audio. So Ada Audio is now importing IEMA products. Those can be purchased directly from Ada's website. And they are shipped and sold from the US. So they're not just drop shipping these over. I know they have some of these in stock. They also have some in stock with a 32 volt power supply. We'll get into that a little bit later, but most of these ship with a 24 volt power supply. I opted to upgrade to the 32 volt power supply because when you get the option to get a more powerful power supply, you get a more powerful amplifier. Overall, I think these share the idea identical enclosure. This is the T9 Pro. This is the regular first edition T9. So they share exactly the same enclosure, but there are some differences. The knob on the T9 Pro is better, better knob. And it just seems like the detail work on the T9 Pro is better, better than the T9. Another big key difference between the T9 and the T9 Pro and even the ST01 Pro is the remote. While this is not a revolutionary remote by any means, it is a significant step up from the, I don't even know if I have it around here, from the credit card sized smaller remotes that many of these type of components used to use. This is kind of jumping into the SMSL topping, the ubiquitous remote that comes with those products. So you would access the base and the treble right here and it just goes pop up and pop down and then volume up, volume down. So you don't have a motorized pot on this one. Everything is being done right here. And then you can also 
adjust how bright the display is because for some people they're not going to like it you can turn it all the way off if you don't i kind of like it it's obnoxious and in your face and it moves around with the music i kind of like that the DAC also displays the sample rate so whether it's 44 48 96 192 although i never got it to go to 96 or 192 because for whatever reason i didn't have any tracks that were running anyway but it did change between 44 and 41 very easily. I had two Ween Pros, one going into the IEMA T9 Pro, the other one going into the Duke Audio ST01 Pro. I had them playing at the same time, therefore linked, and then I had it going through my Duke Audio VU meter a switcher. Then I had those hooked up to the Wharfdale Evo 4.1, which is not a very easy speaker to drive. So you need a little bit of gumption to get up, get it up and go. One of the key differences between the T9 and the T9 Pro is the amplifier chip set that is used. They're both Texas instruments. And the good news is they both sound great. They both sound natural, not super edgy on top or thin on the bottom but they are different. And in a nutshell, the T9 Pro can put out or at least accept a higher power power supply. 32 volt, I think five amp. The T9 Pro uses the TPA 3250. And if that sounds familiar, that's because all of the amps that I love use the 3255. So the 3250 is closer to the 32. 55. So this, the T9 Pro, will not be able to put out the massive amounts of power that an IEMA A07 can, that a Fozzy Audio TB10D can, or any of those amps that are using a 3255 chipset. But it can eke out a little bit more compared to the regular T9. Let's talk about how it sounds. Going back and forth between the Duke Audio ST, I know this gets confusing, okay? The ST01 Pro is basically a T9 upgraded, upgraded version. It's more of a brother to the T9 than the T9 Pro is. Anyway, Duke Audio and IEMA share a lot of I don't know, designs or technology. I don't know. What I do know though, is that when I was listening to them back and forth, I really couldn't tell any difference from a sonic characteristic. I think that the T9 Pro, a little bit cleaner through the mid-range. And since I didn't have actual tone controls to actuate, it was done in the digital domain, I think you can get to zero and know that you're at zero. And I'm not talking about zero as far as volume, I'm talking about getting back to where you started. So back to flat, back to the beginning. With the T9, since these are analog buttons, I don't know if you'll ever really know that you're back to where you started or like flat, extremely flat. I did listen to Waffle though by Seven Dust and I bumped up the bass a couple of notches just to see how it would do, see if it could power the old Wharfdale. Did a good job. I mean, it wasn't gonna be room shaking bass, but it definitely didn't struggle to hit the bass notes. And more importantly, it didn't start to fall apart and the other parts of the music in the mid-range and on the top end. The top end never became crunchy or anything. I could really tell that 32 volt power supply was doing what it was supposed to be doing. Tonally, I think both of these amplifiers sound outstanding. This one and this one and then the Duke Audio. They all sound outstanding. I do think I hear a bit of a difference. This is a bit of a step up from a clarity perspective above the T9 original, the T9 upgraded version, or the Duke Audio ST01 Pro. And it makes sense because this is a different amplifier chipset altogether. Similar, but not the same. You can max this one out with a 30 volt power supply. You can max out the Duke Audio with the 30 volt power supply, but the T9 Pro can take a 32 volt power supply. I'll link Ada Audio's website in the description, but I think they only have two left, so I'll also link Amazon, if you're interested in these. What are my final thoughts? If you are new here, please subscribe to the channel and like this video. I do this for a living, so it means the world to me to give this thing a thumbs up. Subscribe. 
I got a lot of questions about the T9 Pro when it first came out, whether or not I was going to review it. And I, you know, I figured I would eventually. But the one thing that turned me off about the T9 Pro was the looks and specifically the digital aspect of it here. I didn't have it in house. And when I finally did get it and I turned it on, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Actually, it was, I wouldn't say it's so bad that it's good, but the dancing lights got me. It sealed the deal. I think this is a step up in every way from the T9 original or the T9 upgraded version with the exception of how it looks. I do prefer the way that the T9 looks. I think the T9 Pro is a better sounding amplifier. If just by a little bit, I think this one can handle more difficult to drive speakers than the T9 original. I think the remote control is head and shoulders better than the remote control that comes with the T9, T9 upgraded, and even the ST01 Pro. I think this is definitely a step in the right direction. And if you don't have terribly difficult to drive speakers, this can be your integrated amplifier. You can run a sub off this thing. You run your TV right into here, a computer right into here, a DVD player, Blu-ray player, ultra Blu-ray player. You run it in right here if it has a digital coaxial out. The build quality is getting better. This knob is incredible. The surrounds on the portholes here are very nice. These are getting better. Very good. And I also did a thing where I tested how long it would take the ST01 to go to sleep because I know that was a criticism of the first generation because if you pause the source material, this would go click off to sleep in about three or four seconds. ST01 Pro from Duke Audio took about 15 seconds. This one took about 30 seconds. So the issue of it kind of clicking off and then clicking back on in between tracks, it's not gonna be an issue because this one actually takes the longest to go to sleep for power saving or whatever. Very common tubes that you can roll. Uh, I think it's incredible. Incredible, incredible. I'm really glad that they're using the 3250 chip. And originally, some of these were using that 3250 chip and then they went away from them for whatever reason. So I'm glad they're back in the T9 Pro. Wonderful product, have zero things to complain about. Nothing, nothing to complain about. You may not like the looks of it. Outside of that, I think it's flawless at its price point. So if you want to purchase this, you can get it from Ada Audio. You're gonna have US support. It's going to be shipped from the US or you can get it from Amazon. That's a US company too, I suppose. But Ada Audio is a good company. Family run, they're adding a bunch of new products, so great company. T9 Pro, spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. Maybe a little, maybe a ugly duckling for you, but I, I think it's just, Really, really great. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon. Patreon.com slash Chief Audio Man. Every Sunday night, we have Patreon-only Zooms, Patreon-only Discord, Patreon-only Facebook group. You can also use the links in the description. Click buy. If you do, I get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more, so it's a great way to support the channel. You can also buy me a cup of coffee. Down at the bottom of the video, there's a thanks button. You can put a tip in the tip chart, but don't feel compelled to tip me at all. I may have not given you good service today. More importantly, you can just like this video and subscribe to the channel. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen, maybe through your new IEMA T9 Pro. That's awesome. And fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.